sorry about that. I bumped my laptop and I had an interruption. All right, I was getting back to the question Marlisha asked me. What is your favorite yarn to knit with? Is it also your favorite yarn when you crochet? Well, right now, my favorite yarn happens to be Mary Maxim's Milan, which is which is right here. I have a skein of it, Mary Maxim Milan. It's like kind of like Red Heart's Unforgettable Boutique and Burnett's Mosaic. It is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. Right now, it's my, you can kind of see a picture of it, my favorite yarn to work with. It's kind of self-striping. Um, is it my favorite yarn to crochet with? I don't know. I have yet to try and crochet with this yarn. But I will say, currently, my favorite yarn right now to crochet with would definitely be my um, Red Heart Super Saver yarns that I'm using. It's just, a, and they're on my Magic Cake skein that I'm working on my log cabin. Right now, those are currently my favorite to crochet with is the 100% acrylic Super Saver yarn. Although... I will say that, okay, I have two favorites for crocheting. <laughs> right now, it's the Super Saver working on my Magic Cake log cabin, but I really do enjoy crocheting with Knit Picks Dishy Yarn. I find it a lot softer to work with than the Lily Sugar and Cream to crochet with. So right now, the Knit Picks Crochet Cotton is my favorite to crochet with, as well as my Red Heart Super Saver. I have not tried too many other different yarns, I should say, to crochet with or to knit with. I've only really ever used Bernat, Karin, Red Heart, Lilies. To crochet with not that I'm a yarn snob but from the time I learned how to crochet and to knit that's all I ever knew yarn wise were those brands until I got in watching podcasts and really fully got into using wrap other than that I never knew about knit picks I didn't really know too much about Mary Maxim other than it was a craft magazine. I didn't really know anything about any yarns by them that you could get. Um, hmm. Fuzz. Sorry. <laughs> I got fuzz in my mouth. Um, I never knew anything about Madeline Tosh yarn. I always thought Madeline Tosh was an apple, which is Macintosh, but... I never knew what Madeline Tosh yarn was. I never really knew about indie dyers until I really got into listening to podcasts and into rap. I never knew too much about that. So I am very much new to different yarns. I've never used Barocco or Cascade. I've never used the Cascade, and I very much would like to. Next year is, even though I have a gigantic, gigantic, yarn stash and it's mostly acrylic yarns or a mix of acrylic yarns my goal next year is to knit and crochet with different yarns like Barocco, um, Cascade, try some more indie dyers, um, try different yarn companies, things along that line. So I don't know if that kind of fully answered your question but those are the ones that I like working with right now. And Marlisha did ask me another question. And her other question was, what is your, what's your fondest wish for the coming year? 
My fondest wish would be to wish everybody good health and happiness. That's what I wish. That's my fondest wish for the coming year is good health and happiness. Because I could sit here and say, oh, I wish I get the new iPhone or, oh, I wish you get the, this gadget or that gadget. No. Those are material things. I don't wish for material things. I wish for people to have good fortune, good health, happiness, and love. That's my fondest wish for the coming year. It's more than one wish, but I wish for people, all my viewers and friends and family and all, to have good health, good fortune, happiness, and love. And I also hope and wish that if you had any prayers and were asking for prayers, that your prayers do get answered. I'm sorry, we're about to have another interruption, and I'm going to have to pause you guys. All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm sorry if you had earbuds in. Her next question is, what project or project projects do you want to finish by the end of 2015? I want to finish my ice cardigan and at least one of my log cabin blankets by the end of 2015. I am not putting a deadline on those, but I would like to get those finished by the end of 2015. Unless I cast something else on, that I definitely want to get it finished quicker before the end of the year. But right now, those are the only two things that I am working on. I did not set a deadline for my sweater as because I want to start knitting other sweaters. And I did not set a deadline for my Magic Cake Log Cabins blankets because they're a work on them when I want to type project. But I would like to finish them by the end of the year, or at least I'd like to finish one of them by the end of 2015. So we will see how that works out. All right, next question. Is there a new fiber-related skill you would like to learn? Yes, there is a new fiber-related skill I would like to learn. I do know how to spin, but I would like to learn how to do the carding and the prepping and washing of the fibers. I don't know if that's a fiber-related skill, but I would like to learn, I would like to buy a sweater's quantity worth of wool, and I'd like, I'd like to learn how to clean it, how to prep it, and how to card it and spin it up to use it. That is a goal, that is something I would like to do. I would like to try maybe needle felting, but no, my luck, I would probably stab myself with one of those sharp, jagged needles somehow, because if you know me by now, I'm clumsy and I'm accident prone. I've been that, I've been that way all my life. Nothing new. I'll always be that way because that is me. I'm clumsy and accident prone. I think she asked one more question. Nope, that was it. Getting back to the other question, if I could sit and knit anywhere in the world, where would it be? I have thought about that one. If I could sit and knit anywhere in the world, where would it be? I think I would like to sit... kind of hard because there's more than one place I would like to sit and knit in the world and where would it be? One, I would love to go and sit down with Dan and Kate from the Bakery Bears over there in England. I'd love to go and sit down and knit with them over in England somewhere, maybe one of the on-location places that Dan showed, maybe at one of those abbeys 
or at a castle. Um, that will be one place. Another place will be, hang on, I would like to go over to India someday and sit someplace in India with some yarn that I purchased in India, like the Silk Sari yarn, and sit there and knit, maybe in front of the Taj Mahal, maybe in front of a temple or in a temple, somewhere like that. I think that would be pretty cool and pretty neat. And there is one more place I wish I could sit in it. I would love to meet some of my fellow podcasters and sit down with all of you and knit with you. Maybe next year I can do that at Marilyn Sheep and Wool. I would definitely love to meet Marlisha and Talia and everybody else that I listen to on podcasts. I would love to sit down and just knit or crochet with you guys and chat. I do, I am planning on having a virtual knit night coming up. I'm like stuck in my yarn. Don't think I'm like going crazy here. Those are the questions. If anybody else has any questions for Ask Nicole, please submit them into the thread. I will answer them on the podcast here as well as answer them on the thread or I will try to answer them on the thread because I did not write down my answers. So if my answers maybe are different than what's on my podcast, oopsie. But I will say thank you very much for asking me those questions. I thoroughly enjoyed answering them. You guys asked some really great questions. You made my brain think. I'm sorry that some of them have more than one answer, but I'm being completely honest. So yeah, keep guys submit more questions into the Ask Nicole. It can you can ask me anything. It does not have to be fiber or craft related. All right, and that brings us into work finished objects. Do I have finished objects? Hmm. Yes, Nicole does. She has two. I have two, and one of which I cannot show you, but message sorry but I can tease the holy schminigers out of you guys till I am allowed to actually show you what this test crochet secret crochet is that I worked on I finished it this week last night to be exact and I had a hoot it was a blast Especially trying to figure how it was going to configure into what it is. And it was so much fun. I am so glad it's testing my skills as a crocheter and for sewing. And it was so much fun. i got to stop doing it, but I'm going to tease you, but I'm stuck. i got to untangle my yarn. All right, I will tease you. It's in here. It's living in here until I can show you guys what it is. I cannot even post it on Instagram. Once this thing makes its debut, then I can show you. There's only one person that got to see what it is, and that's the person who wrote the pattern. I am back, and you will see I am in another location because I had to move. I am so sorry about this. And I'm sorry if I sound a little frustrated and a little mad. Deep breath, Nicole. And the lighting is really bad where I am at, and I'm sorry. It was my third and final interruption. I am a little aggravated before I go in to finish the objects. Gonna vent here a little bit. I'm a little aggravated with my family. They know I record downstairs in the living room on not the living room, the dining room, on a Friday. They know that. I told them that. They still interrupt me, turn the television on, knowing I'm trying to do it. Oh, it's okay. It's on the TV, go in the back room. No. Quality video, people. I, hopefully, I will not have to put up with being chased out of whatever room it is I am recording just so they can do whatever it is they want, and I have to move. We will 
talk about that in life stuff. I am sorry that I vented to you guys about that, but I just had to get it off my chest. All right, I do have finished objects. I finished the bootacular socks that I was working on. Here is the original one that I had finished. The pattern is by the wonderful Ron Strong, and it's from his holiday knit ebook or knit collection knit book. It was an ebook, I know that. It was a holiday club thing he did. And this was the October sock. And I started these back in September and kind of got stuck in socks and I just, I had to put it down and take a break. And it was mostly because of, I, I don't know, but I, I had to take a break from it. It wasn't stuck in sock syndrome. I think it was, I just needed a break because the yarn, depending on where you are with lighting, can be hard to see it. And I really love the colorway. But here's what it looks like. Yes, it is pooling, and I love that it is pooling. I think it is, I like pooling. I don't know why. I am strange as much as I love stripes. I also like pooling. I don't know why. There's the side. I don't know how well you can see it. There's the back with the cabling. It has cabling. Forgive my awful, awful, awful sock blockers. But there's the cabling as you can see it. This is the first one. They are cuffed down. And I did Kitchener the toe, which as you guys know, I do not like the Kitchener. Kitchener and I do not get along. I do not know why. We are not friends. And it's not like Kitchenering is hard. I Kitchenered my 2014 um Autism Awareness Cow, I kitchened that with no problem, even though that yarn was horrible to work with. Here is my second one, and let me get it on here. Oh, my goodness, Nicole. You'd think you never put a sock on before, girl. Here is my second sock. I did, if you follow me on Instagram, I was posting about my laddering whether I use DPNs or I use, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Whether I use DPNs or I use the magic loop method using CERCs, I ladder no matter what. I never used to ladder when I first learned to knit, when I first learned how to make socks. I never laddered. Then as I started making a couple pairs of socks, I started laddering. I don't know why. I did post on Instagram about it, and somebody, one of my followers, was wonderful enough to tell me what to try. She suggested two suggestions. One is when I start, instead of knitting into the front loop, the first go around, at the beginning, knit into the back loop, knit, 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 knit till I get to the end, knit in the back loop again, go around here the other side, knit in the back loop, knit, 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 knit till I get to that end, knit in the back loop. When I start the next row, knit in the front loop, knit, 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 then knit in the front loop again, and so on, and so forth. And I did that, and it helped with the laddering. Or another suggestion was pull the yarn really tight. But here's the second one. I don't know if you guys can see, can see like you can see a little bit laddering. Not as bad as it was. I did have to fix it on the sides where the laddering is because I did drop some stitches, which was my own doing because the yarn blended in, but it worked pretty darn good if I do say so myself. And I kind of like the way the laddering came out on these socks because the name, the colorway name of this yarn is called Frankenstein. So I love the way it came out. This is the second sock. Cuff down, Kitchenered. My Kitchenering is much better on this toe than it was in the other. Here's the heel. I did make a boo-boo on the number of stitches on the heel. That is user error. You can see what the heel is. I am not going to give the name of the what kind of heel this is because it is a paid-for pattern, obviously. 
and then you will see and I'm purposely going to turn it so you guys can see this but I made a boo-boo on the cabling no I did not rip back I just kept going as you can see it is a design feature I did not rip back because the socks are for me and it's a sock it's going to be underneath my jeans it's not like I'm going to lift my jeans up and go hey check out my sock check out where I made the mistake nobody's going to see it but me so it's it's all good but yeah that's my little boo boo right here here's your cabling I love the way it turned out I as I said my kitchen ring was a lot better on here I do prefer toe up socks over cup down however I do need to get better at kitchenering that's why kitchener stitch and I are not friends I have not done enough kitchener stitch I was like I can't do kitchener I hate kitchener I'm learning to up and that's what I do like, kitchener and I we're no longer friends I'm doing only toe up socks and then I'm like Nicole, you goof, quit being horrible like that. Learn the Kitchener Stitch because it's going to come in handy because there's other projects that require Kitchener. And if you can match your stitch, Nicole, you know how they sew in a sewing machine. Why can't you Kitchener? What's so hard? So I am purposely trying cuff down socks. But as I said, you can see some laddering. It gets better as I went down, but here's the up part. So yeah, I really like those. I do not wash these yet. I want to go get some, I don't have any soak. Any soak for socks or any other knit items, I don't have soak. So what I'm going to do is get some woolite and fill the sink up and soak these with woolite in the sink and just lay them flat to dry. Because I have a feeling that the black may bleed when I go to wash them. I did get these from knitsomnickdesigns.com. You can find the dyer on Etsy. I do have a, a ball of this left over. If I remember, I will include the picture here on here if I remember. If not, it will be on the project page. All right, that is my... <clears throat> I only had two works and objects. The first one was the secret crochet and my socks. Next, works in progress. I was, as you guys seen earlier, talking to you and knitting at the same time on my MPG. My multi-purpose garment by the lovely Emily from Fibertown. Here is the pattern. I'm trying not to hold it. Here is what it looks like, the MPG. You, it's considered a multi-purpose garment. And here's two different ways that you can wear it. And I really like it. It says size small, small, medium, large. However, you can easily adjust the sizes to suit whatever size you are. Just manipulate the stitching. How many more you need to cast on? I am using, you guys seen the yarn before, Mary Maxim Milan, which is 80% acrylic, 20% wool. I really love this. It is a like a self-striping. It's like the Bernat Mosaic and Red Heart Boutique Unforgettable. Except honestly, it feels a lot more nicer than those yarns. It is soft, and I absolutely adore it. It is, if you want it, it is at Mary Maxim. It's $6.99 a skein, and they are approximately 219 yards per skein, and I will tell you, they go a long way, and it's so worth the price. This is how much I have left of that skein. I did make finger loose and out of this, and as I said, it rolls on my DPN. But here's what it looks like so far. I am getting in, as you can see, to the to the yellow color, the gold color. Starts off black and red. And that's what it's working up into. Beautiful, beautiful colors. 
I'm very pleased with it. My other work in progress is my ice cardigan. I did not work on it this week because I more or less wanted to get my socks done. And I was addicted to my secret crochet project that I wanted to get worked on too because I just loved it. This, and you're wondering, this isn't a work in progress. It used to be. <laughs> I don't know if any, if any of my viewers, if you all follow um, the crochet crowd or Mikey's mail, but a year, maybe two years ago, he, there was a blanket challenge making hex, hexagons and turning them into a blanket. Well, I had no trouble with the hexagons. It was assembling the blanket. It was an epic fail. I tried it more than once, and I decided, you know what, Nicole, just forget the blanket. Just frog the yarn. So this, and you can laugh as you see this because it is horrible. I got a laugh out of it. My grandma got a laugh out of it. Yeah, I did a real good job at making this blanket, you guys. So what I'm going to do is all these squares are going to be taken apart and made into mag a magic cake ball. I'm going to magic cake them. And if you're wondering, this blue is um, turqua, Red Heart Super Saver turqua, which is my favorite color. I am actually going to keep all the turqua that I used as the border for this blanket. I'm actually going to use it as the border on my Magic Cake blanket when I decide to finish it. So with that being said, let's get my Magic Cake up. I have been working a lot on this, you guys, in the evening when I sit with my gram because, as I said, I live in an old house and the lighting is bad and being that we have the Christmas lights up and... Let's face it, my gram's older, and she's like, I am not turning all of these living room lights on so you can just forget it. She's like, you've got the Christmas tree, and you've got this light here. Too bad. And I understand, you know, she's 89. She grew up in that time where you did not put a lot of lights on. You maybe only had one or two lights on, if that, and that's it. Your living room wasn't lit up like we light our living rooms up today. Normally, where the Christmas tree is now, I have a lamp and I have that on and then she has the one on by her. But that's okay because this blanket requires, I don't need lighting. I already know how to make it. Patterns in my head. And I can see the stitches quite well. But here's what it looks like so far. Yeah, you guys can see it. It is starting to fit into my lap. I am right here working this line right here. So it has grown substantially since you have seen it last. Just going around, well actually I'm just, it goes this way, I'm going around and around. Here I do five rows five things here to make the log and then I'll turn it and do it this way. So eventually I'm just going around and around and around and this is going to be as big as I want it to be. I am not following the pattern. It is loosely, I just looked at a pattern because I wasn't quite sure. I knew the placement from seeing log cabins on how it goes. I was like, I know it goes around in a square, but Excuse me. I'm sorry. I was not sure on the exact placement of how to do the squares. So I kind of just read through a pattern. I just looked through it. I was like, oh, okay, I need this many rows. And then I do this and da da da. And I was like, oh, I don't need a pattern. I could double crochet, single crochet. I am actually half double crocheting this. And it is going along quite well. I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook and I am on my almost to the end of my second skein on my magic cake I decided to do magic cake on purpose because I had them laying around and I didn't know what I was going to do with it but as you can see this is how much of my magic cake I have left 
and it's just bits and bobs of yarns from other projects that I had that wasn't enough to make anything with, but it wasn't enough just to throw it away. I don't like wasting yarn. If I make a toy or a stuffy, what I do is like when you get to the end and you have to snip things or you're using more than one color and you're done using that color and you have strings left over, I don't throw the clippings. I actually incorporate those clippings into my stuffy. So it's mixed with part yarn clippings, part fiber fill. I try not to waste a lot of stuff because I do not like to be wasteful because I always think, well, there's somebody out there who doesn't have what I have. Or you have that, Nicole. Why do you need to go buy more a new or more of that? I should think that way when I buy my yarn stash, but I don't. I just get that yarn fiber hive. <sighs> Must buy yarn. But no, I try not to throw, I try to be mindful of my yarn, my scraps, because they do come in handy. I do use some of my scraps to tie my plants up with. During the summer, I use some of the yarn to tie up my tomato stalks. I use some of my scrap yarn on my magic cake to tie up my plants in my house that I have sticks, stakes in there and tying them up so they're not leaning over. I do use my yarn because it's not harmful. If I need to move it, it's easy to cut and it's relatively inexpensive. I'm like, I don't got to go to the store to buy stuff to tie it. I have stuff. I decided, because here's where I was, here is the progress marker from last week, you guys. So I made this much progress on it. So now I can move it up. There is no pressure or deadline for this. I would like maybe possibly to have this done by the end of 2015, but there's no rush. This is, I work on it when I want to work on it, and if I don't, I don't. Um, I was worried because I only had two magic cakes. I'm like, I'm going to have to wait till I make up more magic cake balls. So, which wasn't a big deal, I would just start my knit log cabin, which is going to be a lot more planned and color oriented. But when I was working, and part of that's going to go into life, but when I was working in the one room that I'm going to turn into my craft room, I came across this poor, horrible looking, horrible, horrible looking blanket <laughs> and decided to completely frog it and turn the yarn into a magic cake. So when I'm done with my log cabin, when I get to the end of that, I will set that aside and frog all this and turn it into a magic cake and make cakes out of it to use to work on my blanket. And whatever is left over will then just be magic cakes for whatever else I decide to make. So if you guys have yarn that's not enough to do anything with, I really suggest making magic cakes out of them because magic cakes are awesome. They are a great, great way to reuse yarn. And it comes in handy for projects. Like blankets are great, you know. If you don't don't know what to do with it, you can turn it into blankets. You can make shawls out of them. You can make hats. The possibility for Magic Cake's use is endless. I'm one of those people. I love color. I am a color fanatic. I, I'm there like, what can't you make out of a Magic Cake? I mean, you've heard my theme song, No Matching Socks. Well, it's like, Magic cake, hey, I can make anything I want out of a magic cake. And you can even give it as a gift to somebody. They'll appreciate it. They're like, hey, check out this fun, fun, funky fab, the item I got. All right, that's all my works in progress. I am going to move into periphery or life stuff. Oh, wait, before I move into that, um, I wanted to touch real quick.
Natalia, you were talking about how your mom holds her crochet hook versus the way you do. Oh, and also my blank is worked on a US 885 mil crochet hook. This is a um, Susan Bates crochet hook. I do prefer the crochet do crochet hooks over Susan Bates now, but that's just personal choice. You were talking about how your mom holds it more like a pencil when she crochets. I tend to hold my crochet hook like this and just crochet away. This is how I hold my crochet hook. I don't know why. I tried holding it when I learned to crochet like a pencil and it just felt awkward and not right. Holding it like this felt it felt natural to me. So in case you're wondering, that's how I hold my crochet hook, Talia. I'm a lefty. In case any of you are wondering, I am dom my dominant hand is left-handed. I can also do things with my right hand. I'm right-handed as well, ambidextrous, I guess, because I can write kind of with my right hand. Had to learn to do that when I broke my left hand. But I think even before that, as a child, I could do both hands, but I'm predominantly a lefty. I do a lot of stuff with my left hand and I crochet lefty. I can kind of crochet righty, but it doesn't feel natural. But I can and it's horrible. I'm, I'm lefty. I crochet left handed. So if any of you ever need crochet tips for left handed stuff, feel free to ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. And it's my little lotions bag, my little namaste bag I'm keeping for my, in my, my bag. Um, now, when I knit, that's a different story. Because people look at me funny when I knit because they would think when I knit, I would hold my yarn in my left hand and knit that way. But... It is, and I didn't even make that stitch. It's completely unnatural for me, and it's completely uncomfortable, as you guys can see. Like, I have a hard time picking up the stitch, and it's loose. When I knit, here's the yarn. It's probably coming out backwards for you guys versus for me, but when I knit, Here's my left hand, my dominant hand. Here is the yarn with the yarn. Here's the yarn, the string. And this is how I crochet. I wrap it around my right hand. I stick the right needle into the left needle, wrap it around. This is how I knit. I'm trying to show you guys and it's not coming out right. Got a snag, but this is how I knit. In with right needle into the left needle, wrap it around with the right hand, and this is how I knit. I tried it the other way, like they suggested, because I'm left handed, holding the working yarn in my left hand versus my right. I'm like, I can't do that. It didn't feel right. It felt right with me holding the working yarn in my right hand and doing it this way. I don't know why. I don't know what style of knitting you call this. I call it Nicole's own creative <laughs> knitting. And this is how it just works for me. I have yet to try color work, which does require both hands, which should be interesting. That is my goal, hopefully by the end of the year, to try some color work. Before I knit my Madeline Tosh cakes, which is color work, I am going to try just something beginner, something that if it comes out messed up, it's fine. I won't cry because I'm going to use acrylic yarn to do it. All right. That was your little quick tidbit on how I do things. Let's move on into periphery. If you guys would actually like to see see and sit down and see how I knit. I can record a video and I'd use my iPad because I can put my iPad in front of me with my knitting and 
you guys could see it then. So let me know. I'd be more than happy to show you guys how I knit and crochet if you're interested. And again, if you really want to see how, what style I knit in and how I knit, just let me know. I hope that little way I showed you how I knit like this isn't too confusing, being that I'm a lefty. So just let me know. All right, I'm going into periphery now, so if you guys leave me, I will see you next week after Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas or a good day or whatever it is that you celebrate. All right, life stuff. So some things happen. I actually, I've been in contact with an old friend of mine that I knew since high school. Him and I, after high school, got we were close friends. I used to stay over at his house sometimes. And we used to work together, so we were good co-workers. But life happened. We grew apart. I moved up here. He stayed where he was at, and we just lost contact. You know how that happens sometimes when you move and you lose contact with people? Like, you just stop talking to them, I guess, because they're many states or they're overseas, and your life gets busy, their life gets busy, and you don't talk to them that often? I mean, it happens, and... A friend of mine, which who I still talk to, he gave her my phone number and said, hey, look, here's Nikki's phone number. You know, she's been asking about you over the years, and she'd really like to talk to you. So him and I, he texted me, and we were texting back and forth, and he said to me the other night, I text back and forth every once in a while to him, hey, how you doing? Happy Fourth of July. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy birthday, you know, so on and so forth. Stuff like that, like holiday, birthday stuff, you know. And he texts me and he said, are you busy? I said, no. I said, not busy, why? He said, I have some free time. Can I call you? I said, sure. Him and I <laughs> sat on the phone for three hours just talking and catching up. He was telling me he has a wonderful boyfriend, which I am so happy to hear because he is such a sweetheart. And him and I were joking about how he said, remember how you used to come and stay at my house sometimes for like three, four, five days, he said, and you'd, you'd stay there or and you had a day off and I was working. He said, you'd clean my apartment for me. He said, I'd come home and I'd smell the pine saw. I'd smell the bleach. He said, you'd always clean my apartment for me. I never, like, touched any personal stuff. Like, I never cleaned his bedroom because that was personal personal space. Like, I cleaned where I stayed. And I said, and he's like, you cleaned the bathroom, the kitchen. He said, you cleaned every room but my room. He said, you wouldn't touch that. He said, which, you, you know, out of respect. He said, but, he said, I sit about that, and he said, I think about that. He goes, she used to stay with me. She used to clean, because he, he joked with me about being a clean freak and fanatic and organized, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, hey, you let me stay there, you know. At least I could do was cook for you, clean, and do cleaning. I'm like, I was not, not going to clean staying there, you know. I'm like, I was there, you know, not, I, I made dishes, do my dishes. He said, I thought about that. He said, I tell my friends about that, and they couldn't get over it. And we talked about how we used to go out into the clubs and all when we were younger. And he said to me, you know, Nikki, I have to write things down on a piece of paper now because if I don't, I tend to forget to do them. Or if I need something, I have to write it down on a piece of paper. I tend to forget at times. <laughs> and I had to laugh. I said to him, um, I said, Sweetheart, that's because we're getting older. I go, we're 34 years old. We are no longer 21 years old where we can remember everything it is we want to remember. I said, so we are getting a little bit older over the years, and we have to write things down, and our lives are getting complicated, and they're not always that easy. We get busy. I said, I make post-it notes to myself all the time. If I know I need something from the store, I said to him, I write it down and make a list, 
and I know enough that I stick it in my purse or I'll leave it sitting out by my laptop and I know enough to take it with me to the store and get what I need and if I think I can get it someplace else at a better price, I hold off. So it was really nice catching up with him and it was awesome to see, awesome to find out that he now lives in Virginia. He lives three, four, three to four hours away from me, which is awesome. So I am planning some time to take a drive down to Virginia to see him for the day or get a hotel room and stay down there for the weekend. I don't know exactly when I would do that. I am not too fond about traveling out of the state in the winter time, only due to the fact of happening to drive back up here to Pennsylvania where I live because I live up around the po in the Poconos and the weather up here in the Poconos tends to get bad. And I could be stranded somewhere for a few days till I could get home and that can be quite costly, or I could be stranded on the road for a few hours to a few days till I could get back here to the Poconos, and that would not be good. If you are familiar where I live in Pennsylvania, you know that up in the Poconos, we can get quite a lot of snow and ice, and it can be treacherous for driving at times. Not that the state does not keep the roads good, but you can hit black ice. So yeah, that was that. I did talk with my with my one friend, Captain Kirk. I'm gonna call him Captain Kirk. Him and I sat down and we caught up. His work schedule and my work schedule are different, so it was nice to sit and chat with him on Facebook for a while, catching up with him as well. Um, I finished my Christmas decorating. Maybe if I can this weekend, I will make a little video showing you Christmas decorations. I did not do a lot this year. We did not go overboard. We just, I don't know why. We did not put, I know why we didn't go overboard. We normally decorate outside and we're afraid of having a winter that we had this past winter where we could not get our Christmas decorations down until almost spring. And the ones we could get down, we were outside freezing our tukuses off, taking them down. And the next thing I did was, as I said, I was talking about my craft room. I went this week and I started over the weekend and earlier this week, I went upstairs and I started cleaning the room that is going to be my craft room. It is not a total Betty, but it had... It is it is not a total Betty, but it is almost there. She is almost clean. I just have to finish cleaning it out and organizing it the way I want to and bringing my yarn up there. And then figuring out where I am going to set up a spot to do my podcast videos. Because I'm going to set up a little area in the room where I can sit down each week and chat with you guys, and it can be inter uninterrupted. Um, this weekend, I do not know what I am going to be doing this weekend as of tomorrow. Maybe go to the craft store, and I want to go to, I'd like to go to um, AC Moore and see if I can find some more sock yarn because I am itching to start another pair of socks. I would like to get two socks, two different sock style socks on the needle. I do not know why I am like wanting to make socks. Although I do try to have socks on my needles at all times, something for purse knitting, like a purse knitting type thing that I can easily keep it in my bag and carry it along with me that if I'm ever out somewhere waiting, I don't have to be sitting there just like, what do I do, what do I do? I don't want to drain my phone battery, so, or use all my cell data, so let's work on socks. Keep the mind and the hands busy. Um, 
So I may do that tomorrow. I'm not certain what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just stay home and work on my craft room. I'm not 100% certain. Work has been good. Work has been very good this week. Craftsy classes, you guys. Do any of you follow Craftsy? OMG, I signed up for a bunch of free mini classes. I need to start working on these mini classes, and I'm going to start as of next year because that is going to be a goal for myself is to work on my craftsy classes. I was horrible this past year as far as working on craftsy stuff. I started off great doing craftsy classes, and then I kind of just broke away from it and stopped my craftsy classes which is a shame because I really like them and I learned a lot. And I know they're having a really good sale going on, but right now I just money-wise signed up for the free mini classes. There are a few knit classes that I would like to take because I think they are awesome. And I really would like to try those projects. So maybe during the holidays or afterwards, I can sign up for some of those classes, and the best part is once you buy the class, you keep it for forever. You have access to it for forever, and that is the same way with the mini classes. You have access to them for as long as you have Craftsy, and you can email the instructors as well, and there are people on there that would be more than happy to help you. So maybe I'll start a thread next year for, crap, call it a craftsy along, where you just work on whatever craftsy, cra <laughs> craftsy class it is that you're taking, and we can just motivate each other to keep on going and show our finished objects and works in progress. We can just cheer each other along. Um... Anything else exciting this week? Nothing else exciting. So my battery is getting low on my computer and I do need to edit this and get it going. So I guess I am definitely going to let you guys go. And I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful, safe holiday. And be safe and be careful. If you are going to parties where there is alcohol, please drink responsibly. Have a designated driver. I would hate to hear or see that you guys got into an accident because you were drinking and driving. And if you celebrate Advent, this Sunday is the fourth Sunday in Advent. It is the last Sunday in Advent, actually. And I wish you a happy, wonderful fourth Sunday of Advent. I hope you guys had a good third week of Advent if you celebrate it. I know that I have. I tend to look back at this season and reflect on the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I like, I take, I sit back and not that I don't do it every day. But I sit back and I thank the one above us, the good Lord, for the many blessings that he has bestowed on everybody that I care about and love and my family throughout the year. And I reflect on the many, many, many blessings that I have gotten throughout this year. And I sit back and reflect on the wonderful friendships that I have made throughout this year and the wonderful people that I have met and I know and I am so glad to know and I reflect on the places that I have gone and the things I have tried and I am I tend to do that and then I will sit down and think about my new goals for this upcoming year the upcoming year I'm going to sit down and think of my goals what I want to do what what I'd like to do, what I'd like to try, and incorporate the goals that I didn't do in 2014, I'm going to put them into 2015 because I do want to do them. 
I'm not going to look at it as, yeah, I did it in 2014. <laughs> Forget it. No. I'm not. So I'm going to let you guys go, and I will see you next week. Have a blessed holiday. A If you don't celebrate a holiday, have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you guys again next week. Bye.